I would like to introduce our guest speaker today. His name is Chef Dan Bears. And Chef Dan is an Escoffier chef instructor. What he does is he aids online students. He helps them navigate their culinary education. Before working in his current role right now, Chef Dan began his culinary career by achieving his associate's degree in culinary arts and has over 10 years experience, including breakfast and butchery, expanding the restaurant, hotel and cruise ship industry. So I guess to sum it all up, Chef Dan got it going on. Let's just be honest, okay? So guys, without further ado, if you can, we're gonna learn something today. Can you please, in the virtual field, stop your hands, clap your feet, give a great big roar, loud yell of applause, a round of applause for your very own host today, Chef Dan Bears. Uh-oh, Chef Dan, we can't hear you, Chef Dan. I can't hear you. Got it. I think I muted myself. So thank you so much you for pointing go. that out. Um, hello, hello, all. Again, um, I'm here on campus in the Boulder location uh, using the kitchen, which I'm very thankful for. It's a great learning space. You can just feel the knowledge and the tools that we have here, um, which is awesome. Uh, let's get into the food. Um, so today we're going to be making a, uh, a marinated plain steak taco with a chimichurri and some grilled onions on top. So that being said, um, first things first, we're going to come over to the cutting board. I'm going to get the, the steak cooking right away so we can get it to the right temperature, give it time to rest. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about chimichurri, the doneness of meat, um, and how to cut a steak so you get the perfect bite every time. So we'll come right over to the cutting board. Okay. So right here, we have our marinated flank steak, okay? One thing that I wanna point out with the plank steak is you can see the way that the meat runs. So I'm gonna uh, remember which way the meat is going to run before I uh, put it on the grill because when it gets too dark, it's harder to find the way the meat's running. When we cut it later, we wanna make sure we cut against the grain. So you can see the strands running this way, okay, vertically, uh, vertically for me. So they're running up and down here. So when I cut it, I wanna cut it this way. Um, and that's just gonna allow it to be more tender as opposed to breaking apart the uh, breaking apart the fiber with our um, teeth. Uh, instead of one long strand, it's going to be really tough and chewy. Uh, we want to make sure that we cut it so it breaks apart along its natural breaking point. So um, I'm going to get this going on the grill, and then I'll come back to the cutting board here. Awesome. So while we're still on the cutting board, uh, first things first, I'm taking off my gloves. Um, I use that to touch raw meat, and I don't want to touch anything else and cross-contaminate it. And then we're going to go ahead and look here at the onion. So I've quartered onion. <clears throat> so it was an onion like this and I've quartered it and I put it on like this to grill um, so that I can start getting the, the char lines on it. And then it's gonna start breaking apart on the grill. So now we can come back to the main camera. I'm gonna go ahead and finish grilling this on the grill. All right. Okay, so I already have some of the onions going. So what's going to happen right here, as you can see on the grill, is I'm gonna break up this quarter now that it has the char marks. It's already been on the grill for a little bit and I'm gonna put a bowl over the top of it. One of the most important things with grilling and any cooking is playing with your heat. Um, your temperature is gonna control everything. So that being said, I have a hot side on my left side, which I'm starting to stake on to get the grill marks. And then I have my lower side on the right side. And that's why I'm cooking the onions low and slow. That's why I put the onions on first, and then I'm going to put it with a bowl to help it cook all the way through and get that nice charred grilled flavor. So here with the meat, what I'm looking for is a 45 degree angle um, for the grill marks. So what I'm going to do after I get a solid set of grill marks is I'm going to turn it 45 degrees to get those beautiful diamonds that you see on classic steak. That being said, while this is going, um, I do want to talk about uh, the doneness of the steak. Um, so there's multiple ways to know the doneness of steak. The most accurate way is to use your thermometer. And so we have a range, okay? So there's not one specific temperature that is a set of meat, uh, set of temperature. So rare is gonna range from 120 to 130 degrees, okay? So that's how we're gonna get rare. From there, um, medium rare is gonna be, going to be 130 degrees to 135 degrees. Medium is 135 degrees to 145 degrees. Medium well is 145 degrees to 155 degrees. And then well done is 155 degrees plus. So that's one way to take care of your meat. 
or to know the temperature, you can put a thermometer in there and temp it to have a pretty close guesstimate of what you're going to get. So at this point, I have my first sphere. Now I'm going to turn it 45 degrees. Awesome. So I can get that beautiful diamond. The other way um, that you can uh, figure out the temperature of me, and some of you guys already know this, and this is a great technique. Um, so I'm going to show you on your hand. So you're going to touch the tips of your fingers together. Okay. We're not putting any pressure. Okay. So when I touch this, I'm not trying to pinch or squeeze anything. I'm just barely touching the tip. Okay. And then we have the soft spot in your thumb right here. So have your hand open, go ahead, just leave it, leave it loose and relaxed and push on it. Okay. That resistance, that amount of resistance is going to be pretty, pretty close to rare temperature. Okay. Then you're going to touch your pointer finger and your thumb together. Touch, no pressure just so that the, they start to touch and then push on that soft spot of your thumb again. That's gonna be the feeling of medium wear when you touch the steak. Middle finger to thumb, that's gonna be your medium. Ring finger, medium well. And then pinky to thumb is going to be what well done feels like. So if you don't have a thermometer, you don't wanna cut it open and ruin the beautifulness of the, the steak, the presentation, you can always just touch um, touch the tips of your fingers together. Again, no pressure. Otherwise, that's going to make it harder. So just where they, as soon as they touch, go ahead and feel that soft spot of your thumb. And that will uh, give you a rough estimate of the temperatures of the meat set. Okay, so at this point, I can see that the steak is cooking all the way through. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. Beautiful. And I'm going to show you guys right here. So if we come over to the cutting board really quickly, Okay, so here you can see the diamond. So you can see that first set of lines right here. And then you have that 45 degree angle. So you can see that perfect diamond grill mark. We don't want the 90 degree squares, but we have that beautiful diamond. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm gonna put this back on the grill and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about chimichurri. Uh, before I get into chimichurri, um, as well, we'll come back to the, the main screen. Before I get into chimichurri, with those uh, diamond cuts. So you have one side that's really, really pretty, right? Um, at this point, you can forget about the other side um, and you don't have to do the diamond grill marks, but just to be safe, we're gonna go ahead and, and keep that uh, practice in place. So I'm gonna get the lines and then I'm gonna turn it 45 degrees angle. And then I can decide which side looks, uh, looks the prettiest and then I can use um, the pretty side, the presentation side for the dish. Um, so even though I have one side that looks good, I can still, I still want to be careful. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. Next, I want to talk about chimichurri. So chimichurri is a sauce from Argentina. Um, it is a base of, um, we have the parsley, cilantro, oregano, and then there's usually acid mixed in there, which could be red wine vinegar, lemon juice, lemon zest, um, and then a little bit of oil. So traditional chimichurri is not a paste. It's not all mixed together. And you'll see that when we're plating the tacos, it almost looks like you have all these herbs together sitting in an oil uh, and almost like an Italian dressing looking, uh, looking base. So one thing that we want to do with chimichurri, so we want to make sure we stir it really, really well before we put it on the tacos or on whatever we're plating so that it comes together and the oil doesn't run everywhere. Um, that being said, you guys will have the recipe for access um, a little bit later for this uh, chimichurri that we made. It also has a little bit of garlic and some brunoise red onions in there to bring a pop of flavor. So that being said, at this point, I'm gonna check on the onions that are underneath underneath the bowl to make sure they're not charred. Beautiful. With these onions, I'm not looking for them to caramelize. I'm not looking for them to be burnt. I just want them to start to get soft. Um, so that bowl helps, what that bowl does when you have heat underneath, it helps bring the heat into the bowl and then it, it starts cooking it from the top. The heat moves back down onto the onions, um, which is very, very important. Okay. Time to flip the steak. Another 45 degree turn for those beautiful diamonds. And then this is where we talked about when you were touching the base of your thumb, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and touch it and feel it good. And then I can always reference right here. So right now we're looking at a rare. Good, it's starting to be about medium rare. At this point, I'm gonna let it go for another minute. I want medium rare to medium on the steak. One of the most important things that I cannot stress enough with cooking uh, a steak, a beef cut, is to let it rest. Two things are gonna happen. One, it's going to keep cooking. 
Okay, so you want to pull it off a few degrees before it's perfect because the item is still hot. So when we pull it to rest, the temperature is still going to rise. So if you pull it at 128, it's going to end at that 130, 131, uh, 132 range, which is right in that medium rare range that we're looking for. Okay, so we want it to rest so it can finish cooking. We don't want it to keep cooking on the grill. So at this point, I'm going to pull, beautiful. I'm gonna pull the two cuts of steak and I'm gonna put them on a separate cutting board. I will move that cutting board over to the camera. The reason that I'm putting it on a separate cutting board is this had raw meat on it. So anytime for cross-contamination, we're using raw items, whether it's chicken or fish or, um, or beef or pork, we wanna make sure that our finished product doesn't go to a raw cutting board, otherwise it's gonna cross-contaminate. Very important for sanitation here. So. We come back over to the cutting board here. <clears throat> you can see on this beef, so we have those, the beautiful diamond cuts that we've been working on, okay? As you can see right here, um, which looks look great. It has a nice sear. It's very beautiful presentation here. I'm gonna let it sit here for a little bit. Um, and I don't know if that question was asked already. It might be, might be giving you a little bit of hint. Uh, what we wanna do here is we wanna the juices redistribute. So all the juices start to break down and start to leave uh, leave the steak and they drip down onto the grill. Um, at that point, everything is hot, it's moving around. If you know anything, um, if you remember anything from science, uh, when things get hot, they start moving around. Uh, so I wanted to rest down and let the juices spread out evenly into the meat so that when I cut it, the juices don't go everywhere. During this time, I have some lightly oiled corn tortillas. So I'm gonna throw these on the grill. If I don't throw them on the grill, they're going to end up breaking. So you can see that we have a, a hole in this one. Um, from bending it. I want to warm it up so that I can get it to bend without breaking so that I can eat a full taco without it falling apart. So I'm going to put those on the grill for a little bit while this is resting. Now we can see with the beef here as we're looking at it, you can see the way that the protein is running, uh, that the muscle fibers are running. So I want to cut against the grain. So when I cut it, I'm going to cut it like this. One of the things that I did when I prepped this to marinate, I took a big chunk of flakes plank steak and I cut it into quarters, okay? Um, and then the two pieces that I took to use today, um, I made sure that they were the size strips that I was looking for. So when I cut it, I had these beautiful two inch strips that will fit perfectly into the tacos. If say this were a bigger piece, like these two were together, I would go ahead and cut it in half and then cut across the grain um, so that everything would fit nicely into the tacos. All right, so the tortillas, are starting to heat up and get a little bit warm. Beautiful. One thing I do with tacos, um, which you may, may or may not do, is I always put two tortillas down. Um, I wanna make sure that, um, and there's two reasons for this. One, I get a second taco if stuff falls out. And number two, it just gives me a little bit more force when I'm eating the taco, so I'm able to hold everything together. That's my personal preference, but I highly recommend it. Usually you get a free taco out of it. All right, so as I'm flipping these and feeling these, I can feel that they're starting to get malleable. Like they don't have the resistance that they had prior, which is good. So we are almost there. And then I'm going, I have, uh, we'll come back to the cutting board. So I have these grilled onions. And so these grilled onions on the, uh, the cutting board right here. So they're grilled and good to go, but being quartered, they're pretty big size. So I'm gonna come in and take the knife and make them bite size. There would be nothing worse than going to bite into a taco and getting one really big chunk of onion um, because that is going to end up changing the flavor profile of the dish. So I'm just gonna get a quick rough dice on it right here so I can get some beautiful grilled onion. You can see a few of the char marks. You can see that it's nice and soft in the center. It's not like raw onion, which is exactly what we're going for. All right, now that I have the corn tortillas, nice and malleable so I can fold them without the bottom breaking. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of those on the plate. Beautiful. All right, back up. All right, now comes the fun part. We gotta start cutting this thing. Okay, so. Anytime I move something on the cutting board, you guys can see the sharp edge right here. I'm going to flip the knife over so it doesn't dull the knife, okay? 
So I can move it along the cutting board without building a knife. So now I have space right here to work with the steak. Okay. So for the steak, now that it's rested, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come in and cut at an angle. What this is going to do, instead of these one inch tall strips, it's gonna give me wider surface area. I can cut it for you. Beautiful, you can see some of those juices coming out. Looks like we have a nice medium cut here. You can see that pink in the center. You can see where it started to cook, that rectangle around the outside. All right, perfect. So at this point, I have the meat cut and my tortillas laid out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a few strips into each taco. All right, I can see a little bit of blood dripping off, which isn't a problem. I'm just gonna make sure that I clean the plate. Then I'm gonna take some of the onions, sprinkle it on top of the, on top of the meat and the tacos. All right, and then from here, I'm gonna stand my tacos up and I'll move this over into the camera angle in just a second. All right, here's what we're looking at. Here's our base of the tacos. We have that beautiful medium, medium rare uh, plain steak. We have the grilled onions on top. I'm gonna to throw a little more on this. I do love some, love some onions. Next, we're gonna do the chimichurri on top. So this is the chimichurri. So this is basically a bunch of chopped herbs with a little bit of that oil and that acid that we were talking about. And like I said, we wanna make sure that we stir it out. The oil was starting to pool on top, creating a sheet and I don't want that to run everywhere. So I'm gonna take this chimichurri, take a heaping scoop and then run it down the top of the taco. Beautiful. Again, this is a lot of flavor. So I want this. I want as much of this as possible. And then lastly, I'm going to take some lime to garnish the plate. So you can squeeze some lime juice on there. And then we have our beautiful finished plate with the marinated plain steak, grilled onions, chimichurri, we'll be able to make really quickly and really beautifully. So I think that's, that is all I have for you guys. So you can see, see the plate. Um, we want to move on to the questions. First of all, Chef Dan, before I know we got some questions coming along and while you're gathering, gathering your thoughts together, everybody. Uh, first of all, Chef Dan, that looks good. If you want to go ahead and raffle that off to some of us out here, put it on dry ice and send it to us. The winner of the raffle get it. Um, definitely want to say thank you so much. One of the things that I just learned from you was the two tacos. When I do my corn tacos, um, I do two also only because I didn't think about it far as it breaking. I just did it because two years ago, somebody served it to me that way. But now that you mentioned that, thank you so much. I definitely understand the reason of behind it and to leave it on the grill a little bit longer. So definitely thank you so much. Um, so let me go ahead and get off my soapbox and any questions, anybody got any questions for Chef Dan? Hey, Chef Dan, you have somebody in here. Um, one, one said, uh, what are the ingredients used in uh, chimichurri sauce? You're on mute. That's twice. Thank you guys for your patience. I appreciate it. Um, typically, chimichurri is going to have your flat leaf parsley, your oregano, fresh oregano, and your cilantro is your main flavor. And then you're going to use an oil, typically an olive oil, something that has a slight bit of flavor um, that's going to complement the dish. And then your acid, lemon juice, red wine vinegar are common, and then garlic and red onion. Um, so in this one, there is, um, there is flat leaf parsley, cilantro, fresh oregano. And then we have the, you see the, a little hard to see, but you can see the oil pulling up here. Um, and then we have the Brunoise red onion and the very finely minced garlic. From there, there's a little bit of salt and pepper, some red chili flakes. And then for the, the liquid part of it, uh, it's going to be oil, red wine vinegar, and a little bit of lemon juice. Um, I also threw a little bit of lemon zest in there to help, uh, 
help pop that lemon and bring bring a slight sweetness to that acid. Awesome. Thank you so much. You got another question here also, Chef Dan. It says, what temperature was the grill on, on the side that you made that you cooked the flank steak on? Great question. Um, so this is, this is a hard question to answer. Um, it was on high. Um, and high is different wherever you are. And that's why temperature is so important to pay attention to. Um, everybody's burners are different. Whether you're using electric or you have a flat top or you have a gas burner. Um, so uh, recipes are hard in the sense of you can't follow it to the T. If it said cook steak for five minutes on high heat, uh, some of that might make well done for some of you guys, some of, uh, of all of you, and then it might make medium rare for some of all of you. Um, so for me, I had it on high to get those nice grill marks and I was paying attention to the coloring. If it looked like it was starting to char, um, I would have moved it over to the low side, which is why I always have a low heat side and a high heat side on the grill. Great question. Awesome. We got any more questions? I got to agree with Carly up there. Carly said she's making some tonight. I'm, I'm on your side, Carly. I'm going to have to make me some tonight. I can't, I can't wait to taco Tuesday. I'm going to do a taco Saturday. Um, any other questions? <laughs> Looks like we have a question about the um, thumb, the thumb thing that you were doing. Somebody came in kind of at the end of it, and we're wondering if you can go ahead and explain that to yeah. kind of go through. Thank you. Of course. So we'll go over the thumb thing again. Uh, so if you don't have a thermometer, um, and you're a good way to touch, uh, to tell pretty closely to the temperature that the meat is at, is to touch it with your fingers. So take your hand, keep it loose. You know, you want it, you want it loose at this point. There's this uh, soft spot below the thumb, right? And so you can push on that, okay? Um, without touching any of my fingertips together, touching on that is going to be rare, okay? That's really close to what a rare steak is going to feel like. Then I'm gonna to touch the tip of my thumb and pointer finger together, no pressure. As just as soon as the skin touches, again, I'm not squeezing or pinching, I just wanted to touch. And then go ahead and feel the soft spot of your thumb again, medium rare. Middle finger to thumb, again, just touching, no pressure. That's gonna be close to what your medium is gonna feel like. Ring finger is going to be close to medium well, and then pinky is going to be close to what well done feels like. Again, just touching, no pressure. It's the soft spot right, right at the base of your thumb and the palm of your hand. So that's a good way to tell if you forget your thermometer or you don't want to cut it open um, to look inside. Um, that way you can keep your, your steak looking very beautiful um, so it doesn't have any weird cuts in it. And then uh, you can still get pretty close to the temperature that you're aiming for. Great question. Uh, Chef Dan, um, this might be more of an on-the-spot question um, that you might not have the answer to, but you know, where does that, where does that originate from? Um, I know a lot of times I, I'm going to think it's Chef Dan's thing. Uh, but, uh. <laughs> no, that's, that's a great question. I don't have an answer for you. Um, I learned it from a, uh, actually a chef that, that works here at um, the School of Culinary Arts. I, I knew him in the past at, at a, uh, at a steak place and I was doing a dodge there. <clears throat> and I uh, he put me on the grill and I was, I was falling behind. I was in the weeds, I could not keep up. I kept trying to temp everything and poking holes in it. He was like, stop, stop, you're screwing up the space. And so I stopped and he showed me really quickly how to do that. So then I could touch it and figure it out. I don't know where it originates from. We could pick, pick some, let's go Antarctica. I think the penguins <laughs> came up with it, final answer. I love it, I love it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Now, do you season the steak with anything? I have a couple questions about that. Yeah, of course. Um, so um, the steak marinade. So I let this marinade for multiple hours, uh, minimum of four hours. Usually I'll do it overnight um, because flank steak is such a, it's a tough cut of meat. It's very fibrous. When you get flank steak, you have to cut the silver skin off and then work around some of the, uh, the tendons. So it's, it's, not, it's not like a ribeye. It's not like a filet mignon where you cut into it and it's butter. Like it's a very chewy cut of meat, um, which is why I tend to cook it to medium rare. Um, rare when I eat it to help keep it a little soft. The other way to get it soft is to marinate it overnight. Um, and what that does, the acid, um, anytime you soak anything in acid, it's going to start breaking down whatever's in it. Um, so the, uh, the acid starts breaking down the proteins. This marinade, super simple. Um, this is going to be, um, I use some oil, olive oil, preferably. Uh, and then I use soy sauce, which is an acid and also salt. So I did not add salt and pepper to this because I knew that I had soaked it in soy sauce. The next acid is lime juice. 
And again, when you're marinating steak, think about the end product. Uh, we're pairing it with the chimichurri, which ingredients I just went over. So soy sauce is gonna, that saltiness is going to pair well with the chimichurri and that lime juice is really gonna pair well in the tacos. If I weren't using a lime juice, I could use lemon juice or white vinegar. Um, but for this one, I use olive oil, soy sauce, lime juice, and then I use two cloves of minced garlic, uh, like really finely minced for two pounds of plank steak. Perfect. And then um, I have a question from Shelly. Which type of steak is best for tacos, flank or sirloin? Um, I lean, it depends on the type of taco you're making. I lean towards flank personally. Um, because I like, I like that cut of meat. It's a cheaper cut of meat, so I know I can get a lot out of it. And I can feed multiple people. Um, and uh, yeah, it comes out beautifully. It cuts really, really well in the strip, um, as you can see in these tacos here. Um, so I, I go with Plank uh, for that sweet taco style feel. Awesome. Are there any more questions out there? So we can let uh, any more questions out there for Chef Dan. You're only going to have him for about another 30 seconds to a minute. So you got any questions, we definitely want to get the subject matter expert together. Anybody have any more questions for Chef Dan? All right, going once. All right, going twice. All right, we are sold on no more questions, Chef Dan. Um, Chef Dan, you had definitely had the last word. We appreciate you today. We thank you for your expert tutelage. It just looks great. And I, I, if I can feel the energy from your, from all of our attendees today, they probably feel the same way. And all of us are going to eat some tacos within the next five days. Um, so I'm going to give you the last word, Chef Dan. Thank you so much. And you have the last word. Awesome. Thank you all so much for your time. I hope that you go uh, go out and make these tacos as you uh, get the recipes. Try it. Send messages. Let me know. Um, let the school know how they turn out. And thank you all for making time on your Saturday. And I hope you enjoy the, uh, the rest of the presentation. Thank awesome. you, Chef Dan. Thank you so much, Chef Dan.